एवरी वन वेलकम टू प्रथम टेस्ट प्रेप यूट्यूब चैनल आई एम आशीष भार्गव सो वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ डेली न्यूज एनालिसिस दैट वी डू फ्रॉम मंडे टू फ्राइडे एट शार्प एलेवन थर्टी ए एम इन दिस सेशन वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट ऑल द इम्पॉर्टेंट न्यूज फ्रॉम ऑल मेजर न्यूज पेपर दैट इज कवर्ड इन द सेशन एंड एज वी नो दैट द न्यूज पेपर इज अ वेरी गुड सॉर्स फॉर द करंट अफेयर्स एंड नॉट वी कैन से गुड सॉर्स द बेस्ट सॉर्स फॉर द करंट अफेयर्स ऑल द क्वेश्चन दैट इज एक्सट्रेक्टेड फ्रॉम द करंट अफेयर दैट इज बेस्ड ऑन द हिंदू इंडियन एक्सप्रेस एंड different website of government of india so as we know that in this session we discussed about economy based news sports based news science and tech person and news summits and conference miscellaneous national and international news because the reason behind and why we discuss all these things because the most of the current affairs question has to be framed in your exam is based on these things like sometimes economy sometimes international and apart from that we discuss about the supreme court verdict and that supreme court verdict is important because especially for the law aspirant and one more thing that we can say uh, that supreme court verdict is important for the especially for the law student and one more thing that we can say uh, is any state initiative sometimes they will ask to you in your exam like in a cuet also like which state initiative this first like any day and dates if the first time it is celebrated that it will ask possible to ask in your examination so if you talk about like uh, janjatiya divas janjatiya divas so janjatiya divas uh, we celebrate on 15th of november on the 50 very first time in india janjati which means scheduled caste right janjati which means sorry a scheduled tribe so this is very generic questions in your exam they will pos- uh, they will possible to ask you because the very first time and the birth anniversary of birsa munda so they are asking about like f- at very first time which the uh, divas is celebrating now moving further <coughs> is quote of the day if your voice is high uh, only a few people will hear if your thought is high then many people will listen and to inculcate this thought process that we can say to inculcate this thought process you have to develop the temperament to read the newspaper and just one small positive thought in the morning can change your whole day that is a quote of the lai lama and now study hard no matter if it seems impossible no matter if it takes time no matter if you have to up all night just remember that the feeling of success is the best thing in the entire world so basically what i am going to tell you is ki jo bhi efforts hoti hain jab aap exam exam se pehle wo aapne lagani hoti hai aur exam ke baad agar aap sochte ho ki yaar exam ke baad only you think you can think about the regret so if you think ki aapko regret nahi ho to aapko pehle hi efforts lagani hoti hai because agar aap efforts nahi lagaoge so you will see that the jo success ki ek feeling hoti hai that is the best thing was what actually you are aspire to become so don't be confused is news paper ke jo articles hote hain usko main bahut simple language and simple and lucid language mein aapko bataunga so that ki aapko bahut easy hote hain aapko usko samajhna and we have taken questions of the day and questions of the day matlab last mein aapse after the youtube session we discussed about 3 to 5 questions which is very very important and here is our mentors news paper analysis legal darpan current affairs sambhad deep dive math samuda logical reason boost your vocabulary session and now here is a very first news as live mint economics times and ndtv tino mein ye cheeze news aayi thi india rank 5th in the world cuisine list for 2020 shahi paneer among top 50 best traditional dishes globally food for thought india rank 5th in the world best cuisine list and shahi paneer among top 15 traditional dish mein aap dekhoge ise india cuisine rank 5th ab ye hai kya तो आपको इसमें ये ध्यान रखने की इंडिया की रैंकिंग क्या है फिफ्थ रैंकिंग है स्पेशली फॉर द शाही पनीर जो शाही पनीर है आपका उसका टॉप 50 बेस्ट ट्रेडिशनल डिशेस में रखा गया है इसे ये अवार्ड कौन देता है ठीक है हु इज डिसाइडेड टू दिस रैंकिंग एंड ऑल सो हियर वी कैन सी दिस वन इज टेस्ट एटलस विच वन इज अ फेवरेट सो इटली इज इन फर्स्ट पोजिशन यू कैन सी सेकेंड पोजिशन इज ग्रीस स्पेन जापान एंड इंडिया सो इटली इज इन फर्स्ट पोजिशन इन द बेस्ट क्विजिन इन द वर्ल्ड and greece is in second position third is span and th- fourth in japan and fifth one is a uh, india sixth mexico sixth, seventh in turkey eighth united states france peru china brazil portugal poland germany indonesia croatia argentina south korea vietnam and hungary and the last position is taiwan 
now so we need to remember the first position is uh, first position is in italy second position is greece third is spain and fourth is japan and fifth one is india right now moving further one of the world's highest flying birds spotted near city so the bad headed geese are capable of you know lying across mountains at height of 12000 to 14000 feet with winds that blow at a speed of 200 mph so the bar headed uh, goose considered one of the world's highest flying birds recently visited the mutukadu backwaters so nearly seven bar headed geese ko uh, temporarily kya hua hai ki mutukadu mein find kiya gaya aur ye sare migratory birds hote hain jin pe in india mein aane ke baad uski bahut importance hoti hai and we can say this year is good for the birding especially in you know uh, palikarnai so that was considered a good sign for if raptors reach the habitat so agar main baat karu asian wetland census ki so every january thousand of volunteers across asia and australia visit wetlands in their country count water birds so this citizen science program is asian water bird census and isko establish kab kiya gaya tha 1987 mein so asian water bird census that was initiated in 1987 in the indian subcontinent the census cover the entire east asian australian asian flower flyway and larger part of central asian flyway so the main objective is to obtain annual information of water bird population at wetlands in the region the status of wetlands and encourage interest in water birds and wetlands among the public and thereby promote conservation so the awc asian water bird census is an integral part of global water bird monitoring program the international water bird census iwc coordinated by wetland international so the wetland international need to be remember that wetland international that we can say is the international water bird census that was coordinated by the wetland international now moving further as we can see here is an asian migratory bird flyway is from central asian indian flyway is there and west pacific flyway is there right so that migratory birds have a great importance as we have discussed now first ever ever butterfly survey conducted in madhumalai reserve records 175 species so we have to find it out where is madhumalai 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 tiger reserve so madhumalai tiger reserve is where it is and we can say the madhumalai tiger reserve not only you know uh, provides a crucial habitat for the variety of endangered species of birds and mammals but is also home for 175 species of butterflies a survey conducted for the first time in the area has revealed so according to c vidya deputy director of mtr core area a recent assessment carried out by a uh, naturalist volunteers and forest department staff over 3 days so it has been revealed that what is the importance so all representatives habitats were sampled and uh, designed to get the maximum butterfly species diversity present and participant were briefed on the methodological the safety of so we you have to keep in mind that 25 december 24th and december 25th and the survey is what is the aim for that the survey aimed at the you know formulating the formulating baseline data formulating baseline data baseline data for the butterflies present in the reserve which will be uh, used for drawing up a specific management plan for their protection and the knowledge gained from such survey will be directly be you know facilitate butterfly ecotourism this is all about the news is now moving further the third news is a worship program that must go full steam ahead so in this article we have to think about the relation between india and china with an uh, inimical china planning to a larger cadre force india can ill afford to uh, fall behind in its sea control and maritime deterrence capacity so early this month the indian navy chief and admiral hari kumar so we have to find it out who is the navy chief name based questions is usually asked in an exam right 
in the CUET in CLAT exam. So make sure so who is an Indian Navy chief. Indian Navy chief is he right now is Hari Kumar. Hari Kumar is an Indian Navy chief. And the annual press day conference eve of Navy Day. And when we celebrate a Navy Day, Indian Navy Day that we celebrate celebrate on December 4th. December 4th we celebrate as a Indian Navy Day. So on that day he was said about like indigenous aircraft career which is not known to be INS Vikrant. So instead he said he is considering the option to repeat order of IAC-1. The Navy chief added that a decision had been taken at INS Vikrant, had performed well during its trials and would also help capitalize on the expertise now available in the country. So in terms of size, we can say in terms of size, aircraft carriers can be classified as light, medium and larger super carriers. Light carriers can carry up, up to 25 aircraft. The medium size ones around 30 to 35 aircraft, while the larger super carriers can carry over 90 aircraft. So in terms of role, they can they can be categorized as fleet, escort, air defense, amphibious assault and anti-submarine warfare carriers in terms of the methodology used to launch and recover aircraft. So India's first aircraft carrier that is known to be a, we can say, INS Vikrant. So the commission of INS Vikrant in September this year demonstrated India's capability to design and build the largest and most complex of warships. So we can say that the elaboration of the timeline is, the, is to show the time and the effort that went into the design, construction and trials of India's first indigenous aircraft. But we need to keep in mind that in long term India should not lose sight of the fact that China's first two aircraft carriers displaced over 65,000 tons and its third indigenously designed and built carrier which is known to be a Fujian displaced 85,000 tons with a possible air wing of 60 odd aircraft. So China's future plans for a seven ship carrier force include ambitions to build nuclear power super carriers of over one lakh ton displacement with construction reportedly having commenced 2017. So as a major emerging global power with an inimical China and its doorstep, India can ill afford to fall behind in its sea control and maritime deterrence capability. Now moving further, the volume and variety of contraband seized in India. So in this article, we have to find it about, about the star tortoise seized from aquarium. This is not, uh, we, this is very important, but for if you talk about the exam point of view, so no other outcomes has to be find it out. Expedite classification of nomadic tribe in quota list panel tells center. So recently, the Parliamentary Panel on Social Justice and Empowerment, so Parliamentary, just a second. <clears throat> so Parliamentary Panel on Social Justice and empowerment note that the process has been very slow <clears throat> says that delay will increase communities suffering and deprived from the you know welfare scheme benefit so the parliamentary panel on social justice and empowerment empower, empowerment has pulled up the union government over the very slow process to categorize over 260 denotified nomadic nomadic and semi nomadic tribes under SC, Schedule Tribe, Schedule Caste, Schedule Tribe, and OBC list. A government official had pointed out that this is delayed the approval of benefits under the CD scheme. What is the CD scheme for that? CD scheme that we can say is scheme that is the full form scheme for economic empower, economic empowerment of DNT. So the scheme was launched in by Union Social Justice Minister Virendra Kumar. So Minister Cabinet Minister name need to be remember. So who is the Social Justice Minister? 
social justice minister the name is we can say virendra kumar so as of december 27th a total of over we can say 5400 application had received under the seat none of which have been approved and no amount has been sanctioned so after the government said the work has was uh, you know proceeding and would be finished by 2020 the panel said the process was still very slow delay in locating them would increase their suffering and they, they would not be able to get benefit of the prevailing schemes meant for the welfare of scheduled caste and scheduled tribe right so in response to the panel's concern the department of social justice and empowerment had submitted that the anthropological survey of india had submitted report on categorization of 48 dnt communications so we have to think more about the ministry of social justice said 402 online applications of seed which is i told you scheme for economic empowerment and denotified nomadic and semi nomadic tribe so more than 10 crore indians from 1400 communities belongs to this group as per the latest estimates available with the government so seed i told you about like the scheme for the economic empowerment denotified nomadic semi nomadic communities was launched in february 2022 by the ministry of social justice and empowerment this things are very important because okay what is the aim and objective of this scheme is to provide you know free competitive exams coaching to these students to provide health insurance to families to uplift uplift cluster to these communities uh through lively uh, livelihood initiative and to provide financial assistance for housing now moving further ncpcr warns ngos over depictions of vulnerable children for fundraising so we what is the crux of this passage first is what is ngo non governmental organization and what is npc ncpcr so which is basically national commission for protection of child rights right so the practice of civil society organization choosing a representative visuals for fundraising activities concerning development issues such as malnutrition so now faces new scrutiny with the national commission the full form is national commission for protection of child rights protection of child rights that is issuing a directive to non governmental organization not to depict vulnerable children so 2013 that a campaign by a uk based ngo save the children title khushi so what was the khushi that is the ngo name that is a 20 month old baby lying on the hospital bed and malnutrition treatment and all this is the story that we not need to understand but i am just telling you just for the sake of ki aap usko recall kar sako so the campaign was aimed to raise money for the ngo initiative against malnutrition came under scrutiny and for uh, from several corners over the use of you know uh, ima images of vulnerable child the campaign ran for the several years even under some within the ngo were shocked that their organization did not know the latest and well being and whereabouts of the child features on in its campaign so the images from the anand campaign has been pulled down the ngo so we can say that how the any ngos taken the money from the people and that is using something for the different purpose so many of the civil society have welcome to government directives so we ensure that we do not present children in their vulnerability though those representations appeal most of the people in a, uh, instead we can say uh, we present strength and dignity the poorest of children do laugh and have managed to live in dignity so therefore the government position uh, is the right one so <clears throat> the union government has also repeatedly rejected the india performance in the global hunger index so can anyone tell in the comment section what is the rank of global hunger index global hunger index of india so global hunger index may be recently we can see in the clad exam also asked about the global hunger index who released global hunger index so india was rank 107 right 107 out of 121 countries in 2022 can anyone tell in the comment section who released global hunger index 
and we we it is very it's very shock thing that we are far behind than the our neighboring country now moving further so national commission for protection of child rights and p ncpc are the statutory body set up in march 2007 so once the any news related things the we need to go through the background of the story so what was the uh, earlier it was what was the main purpose to establish this one so it is a statutory body set up in march 2007 under the commission for protection of child rights act 2005 so it is under the administrative control of the ministry of women and child development and the commission mandate to ensure that all laws policies programs and administrative mechanism are in consonance with the child rights perspective as enshrined in the constitution of india also the un convention on rights of children it inquires into complaints relating to, relating to child rights to free and compulsory education under the right to education act 2009 so it monitors the implementation of protection of children from sexual offences poxo act 2012 also next news is talking about is centers mandates universal digital capturing of mg narega's attendance so digital capture of the attendance of workers employed under the mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee scheme so mg narega full form need to be remembered because they will ask you in your exam what is mg narega stand for so it is mahatma gandhi mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act right guarantee scheme sorry mg narega's so the union government arguing for transparency and accountability in may 2021 has started a pilot project to capture attendance via mobile application national mobile monitoring system and mms national mobile monitoring system and that was launched by the mg for the mg narega mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act so the job fell on the maids and supervisors who are paid only marginally more than the unskilled workers and make sure that MG, mahatma gandhi national rural guarantee scheme mg narega is only for the unskilled worker is for the unskilled worker both for the male and female as well so there were you know a uh, wide spread complaints over the lack of technical support to the necessary own a smartphone paying for the internet connections and issuing with the erratic internet connectivity so <clears throat> the directive comes even in the many complaints and loopholes pointed out the earlier by users have been plugged yet and uh, we can see narega sangharsh morcha in jharkhand pointed out three major problems with the new systems the app based pattern uh, attendance system carries forward the problem with the electronic muster rolls which replaced the paper muster rolls and was in use of nmms so the analysis condition placed on the mg narega work themselves many activities you know many activists uh, feel that is enough to dissuade them from the relying on the schemes thus failing on basic purpose so every time they you know have brought in a technology based solution they claim it will remove corruptions are they uh, saying they are capturing attendance via mobile applications as we know that that the unskilled worker they are unable to you know operate the cell phone as well so how it it possible to operate the app and all so this is a very great difficulty for the that person also and we can say that <clears throat> so about mg narega it is one of the largest work guarantee program in the world it was launched in 2nd february 2006 the mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act was passed in 23rd august 2005 and what is the objective the guarantee 100 days of employment in every financial year to adult member of any rural household willing to do public work related unskilled manual work make sure that is a unskilled worker for unskilled manual work and legal right to work so unlike earlier employment guarantee schemes the act aims at addressing the cause of chronic poverty through a right based framework so at least one third of the beneficiary have to be women so that is a passed in 2006 so one third of the beneficiaries have to be women and wages must be paid according to the statutory minimum wages specified by the agricultural laborers in the state under minimum wages act 1948 now subsumed under code of wages act 2019 so this is need to be remember for the purpose of your exam now moving further 
what is the delhi high court verdict on ruabza trademark so what constitute strong trademark and what are the reasons listed by the court while deciding to hold the manufacture and sales of beverage under the trademark dilafza so december 21st ko delhi high court in case of hamdard national foundations versus sada sadar laboratory private limited restrained sadar laboratories from manufacturing and selling beverages under the impunjan trademark dilafza so the court observed that trademark ruabza basically is a beverage and we can say ruabza is a prima facie a strong mark requiring a high degree of protection as it has acquired immense goodwill so what is a trademark so we need to understand what is trademark is so the trademark is a distinctive sign for the indicator used by a business organization so tra trademark is basically we can say the trademark is something we can say is a sign or indicator used by a business organizations to distinguish its products or services from those of other entities so it serves as a badge of origin exclusively identifying a particular business as a source of goods or services so the trademark infringement is the unauthorized uses of a sign that is identical of or disciplinary similar to a registered trademark and what is the dispute is all about so dispute is the manufacturer of ruabza moved the an appeal against the rejection of its application seeking the in uh, intern injunctions against uh, sadar laboratory private limited for their product dilafza and the appellant state before the court that a trademark ruabza is highly reputed mark in the market with regard to the sharbat sweet beverages furthermore it was claimed that the design of the product dilafza is a, we can say deceptively similar to the get up and trade dress of the appellant product what was the court verdict so the division bench of the delhi high court restrained the respondent sadar laboratory private limited from manufacturing and selling any product under the trademark dilafza till final dispose of the trademark infringement suit so the mark is said to be strong when it is well known and has acquired a high degree of goodwill the degree of protection of any trademark changes with the strength of the mark the stronger and the mark and higher the requirement to protect it so ruabza requires smooth protection as it more likely to be subjected to piracy by those who seek to draw an undue advantage of its goodwill and judgment set so the firstly the impunjan trademark dilafza has a phonetic similarly with ruabza secondly recall from memory is triggered by the english meaning of the word ru and dil in fact the heart and soul is commonly used for phrase provides a common conceptual background so now we moving further to the questions of the day here is the very first question who among the following have the power to increase the retirement age of judges of the high court and supreme court of india option a department of justice ministry of law and justice parliamentary standing committee on personal personnel public grievances law and justice c option parliament and supreme court collegium so as we know collegium system is work to for is for the appointment and transfer of supreme court and high court judges and the collegium system there are five eminent person including cgi and four senior most judges so in our country judges decided to another judges right so who we can say who can uh, have the power to increase the retirement age of judges of high court and supreme court of india so obvious the answer would be here parliament so parliament have a sovereign authority to increase and decrease so c option the so supreme court judges retire at the age of 65 years and the judges of 25 high courts in the country retired at 62 years so make sure the retirement age is different for the supreme court judges and the high court judges and the constitution article 114 amendment bill was introduced in 2010 to increase the retirement age of high court judges to 65 years however it was not taken up by the consideration in parliament and lapsed with the dissolution of 15th lok sabha Moving to the next question, who is the following? Is India fifth prime minister? The answer would be here, Chaudhary Charan Singh. 
So the Chaudhary Charan Singh served as the fifth Prime Minister of India between 28 July 1979 to 14 January 1980. Historians and people alike frequently refer to him as the champion of India peasants. Union Home and Corporation Minister Shri Amit Shah. So big discussion asked in the CUT exam, like who was the Corporation Minister. So make sure Corporation Minister is Amit Shah. So you have two Home Minister as well and Corporation Minister also. So wished farmers across the country on the occasion of Farmers Day and Farmers Day we celebrate on twenty third of December. And why it is celebrated to commemorate and recognize the farmers as the country backbone. And around as per the data, Ministry of Farmers we can say sorry. Uh, as per the data of ministry that 54% of people is still that their livelihood depend on the agriculture so the date was selected as it coincides with the birth anniversary of india fifth prime minister chaudhary charan singh and it is being celebrated since 2001 moving to the next question consider the following statements the decision of supreme court are binding on all courts in india high courts have the power to issue writs related to fundamental rights Subordinate courts have the power to deal with civil cases and not criminal cases. Which of above statement is are correct? First and second, first and third, second and third, and first, second and third. So is the solution a, a option because Supreme Court decisions are binding on all courts can transfer to high court judges also can call a case from a lower court to it itself and can transfer cases from one high court to another. If you talk about the high court judges, consider the appeal from lower courts has the power to issue fundamental rights related rights also. So, so we can say Supreme Court and high court both have an issue rights. So both have a rights to issue rights. So deals with cases within state jurisdiction, supervise the control uh, lower courts, and what is the role of district court? So deals with local cases of the district, considers appeals regarding lower court decisions, decide serious criminal cases, and if you talk about subordinate courts, deal with the case of civil and criminal nature. So second last question, Bhasha Samman Award is given by the Sa uh, Sahit Academy. Which of the following statement best describe the Bhasha Samman Award? It recognizes young writer under the age of 35. It confers a person recognition of their substantial contribution in the field of Persian, Arabic, Pali, and Prakrit language. It recognizes scholars who have done valuable work in the field of classical and medieval literature. And, and C is the right option. And the last question, while burning hydrocarbon fuels, if you see a blue flame, it means that the fuel is burning completely, made of saturated hydrocarbon, made of unsaturated hydrocarbons and wet fuel is wet so the answer would be here option b in saturated hydrocarbons complete combustion of the fuel for and for the combustion process it requires the oxygen as well right so the combustion of the fuel takes place but in the unsaturated hydrocarbons in complete combustion takes place so in saturated hydrocarbons give a blue flame while unsaturated hydrocarbons burn with a soothing flame so this is all about the session student and, and I hope that you enjoyed the session a lot. If you have any questions regarding this session, please let me know in the comment section. And uh, please share this video as much as you can to your friends and family group also because a newspaper is not confined to the only for the experience only. Every aware citizens need to be, uh, you know, read the newspaper to know about what is happening in your country, what is happening around the world, right? So. We'll meet you tomorrow at the same time at 11.30 a.m. Stay tuned. Bye-bye and take care. Make sure if you are new in this channel, please do not forget to press the bell icon and subscribe the channel so you will get the notification of all the YouTube session. Thank you so much for joining with us. Bye-bye and take care.